Hi, hello, hello, how are you? Okay, so I'm just a few minutes late, but prayerfully lunch hour is like, let me fix my hair, right? Prayerfully lunch hour is like 11.30 to one, just different hours for different people and everybody, right? But I wanna make sure my Bluetooth isn't on. So hi, hello, hello, who am I? I'm Pastor Garlinda Price. Mm-mm-mm. I had to drink some water with Common Ground Ministry. I am back doing the Launch at Lunch and Learns or Launch at Motivation. Hey, Bree Bree, so excited. Ah! So I'm going to try my best not to ramble um, because I can do that sometimes. And so I was like, let me just pray beforehand, take a breath. So I make sure I say what thus saith the Lord. Hey, Linda Wiggins Parker, can't wait to see you tomorrow. So today I have so much yumminess that the Lord wants me to share with you. And I'm going to try my best. Just do, to just do it in order, okay? So the first thing I want to do is let me mark my page so I know where I'm going back to in a second, okay? And then we'll get started. How was you all's Monday? I know it's amazing. I hope you had a great weekend. All last week, I got to be, and not all last week, from Thursday through Sunday, I got to be in Tampa. I had such a great time. Lisa Lasseter, I know I owe you a phone call, but I knew I was getting ready to do a video, so I, I mean a text. I didn't text you back yet, okay? So who am I? I'm Pastor Garlinda Price with Common Ground Ministry. So excited. The Lord laid it on my heart to start back doing the launch it, lunch and learn or launch it motivation because um, for a little while, just didn't have to do it, right? He didn't have me on an assignment to keep doing it. And so as I was flying back on Saturday night, um, as I was driving back, actually, he was like, I want you to start back doing the launch at motivations um, at lunchtime every day during the week, okay? And then on the weekend as the Lord leads. So what the Lord laid on my heart on today was advancing our troops, right? And I shared that in a post earlier. But what, the, what I heard the Lord say in Revelation this morning was advancing our troops and scaling the walls, right? And the Lord, hey, Donna Clack, God bless you today. And the other thing, and it's going to sound rambly for a second just while I give you the context of what he gave me. He said, a pass-through gate is not the destination. The road is different, although the way looks the same. Right? So the Lord said we, that we're, he's advancing our troops, but he's also called us to be able to advance against a troop. I'm going to share with you what the difference is, okay? I, we can advance against a troop, but the Lord wanted me to share with you on today that I, the Lord thy God, I am advancing your troops. And then he said, I'm showing you and I'm allowing you and I'm causing you and I'm making you to scale the walls. Glory to God. So I'm going to break all that down in definition. But this is something that's important to note. A pass-through gate is not the destination. The road is different, although the way seems the same. Right? I'm like, Lord, okay, that sounds like a riddle, right? It sounds like a, um, a Batman and Joker riddle. Where does he get those wonderful toys, right? But what the Lord means is, and he always takes me back to one of my favorite um, chapters of scripture is Joshua, right? When Joshua was leading the Israelites over, um, into the promised land, right? He said, Joseph, um, son of Nun, Moses, thy servant is dead. And so now it's time for you to go and to lead this huge group of people over into their place of promise. And so, um, somewhere in revelations, you may see that, um, Joshua was accused by Satan of being dirty, right? Or having on dirty clothes. And so when he was accusing him of being dirty, the Lord said, Oh, he's dirty. Okay. I'm paraphrasing. Take off his clothes, clean him up, put on, a, put on a new robe, give him a clean turban because he had created Joshua to lead the remnant across into the promised land. So sometimes people will look at you and the, and the enemy will tell the Lord because the enemy counsels with the Lord every day, right? We think that Satan lives in hell and like he's locked in a dungeon and he's down there with a pitchfork. But no, the, the in, there's a court in heaven right? And so there's a book out called The Courts of Heaven. You really should get it and you should read it. I want to read the entire series as well. But the enemy has access to God all the time, right? He has to get permission from God to do things. And so therefore he's always accusing the saints, right? He's always there ready to accuse you, always ready there to say, Sabrina ain't doing what she's supposed to be doing. Donna ain't this. Margaret ain't that. He's always ready and waiting. They're dirty, and the Lord said, oh, okay, you find my servant dirty. Okay, well, then he calls, calls to his angels, our troops, right? Our servants, the ministering servants, right? Now, they, they're at the command of God. They will come to our command at the will of God, right? In the name of Jesus. So he's telling our troops and our God that we are dirty. 
So therefore, people may begin to perceive you and look at you a certain way because the enemy has accused you. Glory to God. I don't know why I'm talking about this part first. It's not where I intended to go, but let's keep going with it, right? So the enemy had accused Joshua of being dirty. And the Lord said, okay, well, he's dirty. He called over the attendants, the angels, and said, take off his dirty clothes, clean him up, and I'm going to put a clean robe on him. And I'm going to put a clean turban on him because he's a priest, right? And so I'm going to cause him to go and lead my remnant over there across, to this, across this Jordan, across that flood stage so that they can receive and enter into their promise. And where does the, the revelation of the gate come in? Glory to God. Let me slow down. Okay. Where I don't get all excited. Be doing cheetah flips on the phone, right? Where does the revelation of the gate come in? God bless each of you that's just joining. Hey, Re, Hey, Kelly. Hey, Tierra. So God said on today, I'm causing your troops to advance. Glory to God. I'm causing the advancement of your troops and I'm allowing you and I'm blessing you to scale walls, says the Lord thy God. But this is the thing. He said, a pass-through gate is not the destination. The road is different, although the way seems the same. Glory to God. What does that mean? So when, the, when Joshua had to lead the Israelites across the Jordan at flood stage on dry ground, right? Um, when they went into the water, the Ark of the Covenant went in. The water backed up on both sides, right? So the fighting men of Manasseh went in first. Right? So when the fighting men of, and we talked about this, but stay with me. I'm not talking about the same thing. I want you to get where I'm going. The fighting men of Manasseh went in first because the enemy possessed the land. Right? So the promise that we are working towards, fighting towards, getting towards, gaining towards, going towards, the enemy possesses it. Right? And so they sent the fighting men first. So God said, I'm advancing your troops. Glory to God. I'm sending the angels ahead of you. They're going to go up here and they're going to go over here and they're going to fight on your behalf. Right? We don't have no fighting men of Manasseh. We have the angels of the, the Lord's army. Right? So our angels are going ahead of us to fight ahead of us so that we can possess the promise. But these were the instructions when they entered into the gates of the promised land, when they entered Canaan, right? So they crossed into the gates. And the one thing that the Lord told the Israelites, he told them many things, but the one thing that the Lord told the Israelites, he said, when you go into the land of Canaan, he told the fighting men of Manasseh, you cannot have your land. You cannot rest in your land, which was on the other side of the Jordan, right? Until you go in and help all of your brothers possess their territories. So when they went in to go and fight, the instruction that the Lord had given the Israelites was don't take on the ways of the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, the Gergesites. Don't take on their ways. I want you to hear me. And it's going to make sense in a second. Don't marry their children. Don't, don't have your daughters marry their sons. Don't have your sons marry their daughters. Don't take on their dirty and foul traditions. Don't take on their ways because they were cruel fighters. They were cruel enemies. They tortured people. They were wretched, right? They, they worshiped idols. They, they worshiped um, inanimate objects. The Lord told them, the people of God, the children of God, go, you're going to go and, and enter Canaan. You're going to go through the gate. But the gate is not the destination. You need to keep going, right? The fighting men of Manasseh are going ahead of you and they're pushing back your enemy. They're fighting back your enemy. Don't go in there and become like the people that are there. The gate is the entryway, but it's not the destination. The road looks the same, but the way is different. Glory to God. What is the Lord saying? I'm taking you into a gate and you're going to have to go through the gate of the enemy. You may even have to go with the enemy into the gate, right? Glory to God. Some of y'all going to understand what I mean by that. You may have to, you're going to go through the enemy's gate to get your land because guess what? The promise was in, the Canaanites lived in your promise. They lived in our promise. The enemy was in our promise. So therefore the angel of the Lord, the angels of God are going ahead of us so that we can possess our promises, right? And we're going to have to pass through the gates of the enemy, but the Lord will fight on our behalf. Right? So as the Lord is going to fight on our behalf and as we're walking through the gate, don't start hanging out with the enemy. Don't get comfortable with the enemy. Don't be like, oh, they're all right. They're okay. They're not like what I thought they were. God said, what did he say? The pass through gate is not the destination. You don't get to stay and hang out and chill out with the enemy. Right? It was just the gate to get you through, to get to your promise. And now I need you to keep walking. I need you to keep fighting. I need you to keep going. I need you to keep following the angel of the Lord as he advances your troops. And as he allows you to scale your wall and as he makes your way, don't get comfortable. Glory to God. That's what the Lord is saying. Don't get comfortable with the enemy. Don't get comfortable in evil places. Don't get comfortable with evil people. Glory to God. The gate is the way. And you may have to, yes, go through the enemy. You may have to go through the evil people. You may have to go with the evil people. But it's the gate is the way. It's not the road. Right? It's just the entrance. Glory to God. It's not the destination. 
You just have to go through that gate that the enemy possesses that land, right? They, at the time they possessed it, but God is sending you in to dispossess. See, people think you're going in to possess. I'm going in to dispossess because you're sitting on what belongs to me. Glory to God. The enemy is sitting on what belongs to you. So the Lord is sending your troops ahead of you. And he said, I'm going to cause you to be able to scale the wall. So let's keep going. So what does it mean? Advance. Advance means to go or bring forward, to move ahead, to help to grow or to develop, to cause to happen earlier, right? To make or become higher increase, to get a higher or more important position and moving forward and ahead, progress, a rise in value of cost, a payment made before it is due in front, ahead of, ahead of time, before do. The Lord said, I'm causing you to go ahead of things. I'm causing you to go ahead of the enemy. I'm causing the, the advancement of your troops. I'm causing you to be able to go ahead of time, ahead of schedule, ahead of payment, ahead of your due date. Glory to God. This is what the Lord wanted me to share with you on today. And he said, the troop is, that's the gather or move in a group or a crowd. God is saying people of God move in unison, move as the angels move, move as the Holy Spirit move, move as I, the Lord, your God moves. Don't waver from the front or the left. And that's why the Lord told Joshua, um, be very courageous, right? Don't be afraid. Be very courageous because he was going to see some things that should scare the natural person, right? You're going to see some things that naturally would put fear in the heart of man. Naturally, they would put fear in your heart, right? You're going to see some things along this journey. Right? Especially in ministry, I let the dog in. Especially in ministry, especially in business, especially in your positions of employment, you're going to see some things that could scare you. You're going to come up on some people that seem scary. You're going to come up on some people that seem intimidating. You're going to come upon some people that seem like they want to always speak death over you or speak things over you. Right? Rebuke them right then in the name of the Lord. Right? The Lord kept telling me, and then we're going to get back to the word. He's been sharing with me over the past few months, don't take back. Don't take down and don't stand down. And I kept thinking, why is he telling me that, right? I'm sorry. Why is he telling me that? Don't take back. Don't take down and don't stand down because the Lord is telling us to advance. He's telling me to scale. He's telling me stand your ground. He's telling me be firm. He's telling me be bold. He's telling me don't take back, meaning set boundaries, Glory to God. And so that's what we have to do is we have to set boundaries. And so he said the word scale means to climb up is by a ladder, a wall that which divides, shuts off a space or shuts something in. Right. See, when they were going into the promised land, they were shut in. Right. They had to go in and possess it. So when they went in, most of these places were surrounded by a gate or a fortress or a wall. But the Lord said, there's nothing that you won't be able to get that I have for you because I'm making you to be able to scale walls in the spirit realm. Glory to God. I'm making you to be able to climb up a wall as by a ladder that which divides or keeps you or separates you from your promise, that thing which is shut off to you by space or something that I have for you that's shut off from you, I'm allowing you to scale the wall. Glory to God. Not only am I advancing your troops, I'm giving you the ability to scale. Glory to God. Scale means to make higher, to grow up, to be able to access, like you said, with a ladder. But when you want to scale something up, that means you're making it bigger. You're gaining greater access. You're gaining higher ground gaining higher ground, right? You're able to get in. And so the Lord said, I'm causing you to scale like Superman. I mean, not Superman, Spider-Man. You know how Spider-Man could scale the walls and he had the little webs in his little hand, right? But God said, I'm causing you to be able to scale like that, right? Like you're going to be able to walk on the wall. I'm going to prove it to you in the word. Glory to God. And then God said, I'm going to bless you to go in the gate. The gate is a door in a fence or outside a wall. The gate is a door in a fence or outside the wall. So remember I said there's a pass-through gate, but the gate is not the destination. The Lord said, I'm going to show you the way in. I'm going to give you the way into your promise. I'm going to give you the way into your territory. I'm going to give you witty strategies. I'm going to give you witty inventions. I'm going to give you witty ideas. I'm going to give you witty ways to reach the people that I've caused you to reach. And you're going to scale the wall. And that thing that seemed blocked to you, I'm giving you a way in. I'm giving you access. I'm granting you access. Glory to God, says the Lord thy God. So God said, then it was hind's feet. And I'm going to read the scripture to you. Hind's feet. 
So Psalms 18 and 29, it says, with your help, I can advance against the truth. I can go ahead of the enemy. Glory to God. With your help, God, I can advance against a truth. And so that's what the Lord was telling me. He gave me revelation in the scripture and wanted me to share it with you. With your help, I can advance against a truth. With God's help, you can exceed and advance against your enemy. The same way Elijah tucked in his cloak and ran ahead of Ahab, Elijah ran ahead of time. Oh, glory to God. What are you saying, preacher, right? He in it, he went in advance to go forward, to go or bring forward, move ahead to help grow or develop, to cause to happen earlier, to make or become higher increase, to get a higher or more important position, a moving forward and ahead, progress or rise in value, a cost or payment made before it was due in front ahead of time. Glory to God. Elijah ran ahead of time. God said, I'm going to cause you and to be successful and to run ahead of time. Glory to God to run ahead of your enemy. I'm going to bless you on today to advance against the troops. I'm not even concerned about the enemy or what they say or what people speak over you or what people try to um, bring about in your life or what they try, the curses they try to speak over you. Rebuke them and keep moving. And you ain't got to say it out loud. Rebuke them under your breath. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I cast that back into the outer abyss of hell. I cover and seal it with the blood of Jesus. Y'all have a great day now, right? They don't have to know what you're praying under your breath. Rebuke them. Don't let people speak word curses over you or speak things in your life that you know aren't the truth or you know you're not that way. Y'all know what I mean. So with your help, Psalms 18, 29, I can advance against the truth. With my God, I can scale a wall. Then he sent me to Psalms 18, 33, and this is when it got yummy, juicy, and delicious, right? He said in Psalms 18, 33, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for a battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. Well, I thought that hind's feet were like the back feet of a deer, right? Maybe you knew it was something different because you're a scholar. I'm still, the Lord's still teaching me, right? I'm not a finished work. I'm a work in progress. Glory to God. So, Hind's feet. He said, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer, like Hind's feet. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for the battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. What are you saying, preacher? So Hind's feet. A hind is a female deer. You probably knew that. I didn't, right? So a hind is a female deer that can place her back feet exactly where her front feet stepped. Not one inch off. Glory to God. So God is saying, I can make your feet be like the feet of a deer that everywhere you step is sure. Everywhere your feet go, your, your back feet will touch where your front feet went. So your steps are sure in the Lord. Amen. So he said, a hind is a female deer that can place her back feet exactly where her front feet stepped. Not one inch off. She is able to run with abandonment. What are you saying, preacher? So in other words, in times of danger, she is able to run securely and not get off track. Glory to God. So God is saying, I'm causing you to advance against the troops. I'm causing your troops to advance. I'm causing you to scale the wall and I'm causing your feet to be like that of a female deer, like hind's feet. You will run and you will not lose your footing. You will not fall. You will not take down. You will not stand down. You will not take back. You will run with assurance and you will run securely and you will not get off track. It says the hind is able to scale unusually difficult terrain. Glory to God. So God said on today, I'm causing you to scale unusually difficult terrain, says the Lord thy God, and elude predators. What's a predator? Anybody that's against the will of God in your life? He said, and elude predators. The word elude means to evade, to avoid, by being clever, to keep from being seen. So God said, I love you, mommy. So God said that on today, I'm causing your feet to be like the feet of a deer, like the hind feet, like the hind female deer. I'm causing your feet to be sure. I'm causing you to elevate. I'm causing you to scale the heights. I'm causing you to run with abandonment. I'm causing you to elude the enemy. He won't even see where you're running to, right? Because he won't be able to track your steps, your hind feet and your front feet. They're going to run into the same place. They're going to run into the same inches. They're going to run. You won't even be off, not even by a little bit. Glory to God. He said, in other words, in the times of danger, she is able to run securely and not get off track. So there's going to be some dangers. There are going to be some people that come against you. There are going to be a lot of people that come against you. Persecution sucks, right? <laughs> but the Lord God said in his word, he said, anybody that left houses and land, mother and father, sister and brother, for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the kingdom, that I will return it to them a hundredfold in this life and in the next with persecution. 
So persecution is going to come, but God said, I'm going to cause you to be like the hind. I'm going to cause you to have hind feet. The hind is able to scale unusually difficult terrain. In other words, preacher, what you saying, preacher? Glory to God. He said, I'm going to cause you to be able to go places other people couldn't go faster than they could have gone. They're not even going to know where you went because I'm giving you illusion. I'm, I'm going to allow you to elude them. I'm going to cause you to evade them. I'm going to cause you to be so clever that I keep you from being seen. They won't even know which way you went. Glory to God. The last thing I want to share with you. So a lot of times when we're called to do things, right, a spirit of intimidation can try to attack us or a spirit of intimidation and fear can try to come over us because we deal with controlling spirits, right? We deal with um, spiritual wickedness and darkness in high places. We don't fight against flesh and blood, right? That's the word of God. So I'm not fighting you in my flesh. I'm fighting you in the heavenlies, right? So God said we, did, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, the rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now you may say, oh, that's way too churchy. Well, you better read the book because that's what the book said. I, this ain't Garlinda's words, right? And so glory to God. So I said, well, God, what do you want me to share with the people when they become fearful? What do you want me to share with them when they become intimidated? What do you want me to share with them when we become afraid? Glory to God. And the Lord led me to 2 Kings six and let's do eight and then we're going to go after i read this to you right this passage of scripture but it's second kings six and eight and we're going to stop i won't tell you where we're going to stop in case you think it's too far <laughs> right so now the king of aram was at war with israel after conferring with his officers he said i will set up my camp in such and such a place the man of god sent word to the king of israel beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. See, God is going to use you to warn people. Now, they might not necessarily um, heed the warning. They, they might not know who you are. The question is, do you know who you are? I shared that word on Saturday, right? The question is, do you know who you are? So here it is. Elisha heard that. I won't even get ahead of myself. But the king said, the king of Aram, after conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king. So Elisha sent word to the king. Now, he didn't meet with the king. The king was meeting with his troops. The king was meeting with his officers. But Elisha sent a word to the king that said, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. He's trying to warn him, don't get set up in a trap, right? So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God, meaning he went to confirm the word. <laughs> you know how sometimes you give a word to people and they, got, they want to go confirm it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Go confirm the word. Be, word. be a fruit inspector. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. So Elisha was positioned. He was on an assignment to the king of Aram to tell him, hey, go here, don't go there, do this, don't do that, because he was there as a hedge to protect him. Glory to God. But this enraged the king of Aram. See, some people are going to get enraged by your warnings. They're going to get enraged when you try to protect them. They're going to get enraged when you give them a word. They're going to get enraged when you're just trying to serve, right? Why? Because it annoyed the king of Aram. He said he summoned his officers and, and demanded of them, will you not tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel, right? He wanted to know who's telling this man all our business, right? So none of us, my Lord, the king, said one of his officers, if you just joined us, we're in 2 Kings 6 and 12. But Elisha the prophet who is in, in Israel tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. I wanted to throw my phone when I read this, right? And I even wanted to throw my phone when I said it to you. I'm going to read it to you one more time because this is a gift that God has given many of you. Maybe not all of you, right? But it is an amazing gift. None of us, my Lord, the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Glory to God. God has blessed many people. I don't know if it's you, so I don't want to prophesy that. But God has blessed many people to hear what's not spoken, to see what's not seen, to hear the words that people speak in their bed chambers, right? The word of God talks about that. It says, be careful what you say in your bedroom because a little birdie may take it from the bed chamber and, and run with it on the wind, right? So Elijah had the gift to hear. Glory to God. So God, well, stop it. 
So some of you have the gift to hear what people are saying in other states, in other countries, in other places. I know it's weird, right? It's, it's not weird. It's peculiar, right? So glory to God. So he said, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. So see, people, they're not careful with you sometimes. They're not cautious with you sometimes. But the Lord said, I'm causing you to advance your troops. I'm causing you today to advance against the troop. I'm causing you today to scale the walls. He said, I'm making your feet like the feet of the hind deer so that you can run on, on um, unfamiliar territory and you can run on difficult terrain to reach the place that I've called you to go. You're going to get there quickly. You're going to advance so quickly, right? You're going to advance ahead of time. You're going to advance ahead of when you were supposed to be there. And you're going to advance ahead of people that are on their way there. See, Elijah and um, Ahab were going to the same place. And Elijah said to Ahab, this is in a different passage of scripture, so stay with me. Elijah said to Ahab, you better hitch up your chariot and run on. I, I, I hear the sound of rain. Glory to God. So when he told Ahab, his enemy, you better hitch up your chariot and run on because I hear the sound of rain. It had not rained in three years, right? Because Elijah had caused the, he had called for the drought. So now that he called for the drought to end and rain was coming, it says in the word of God, he tucked in his cloak and he ran ahead of Ahab. He beat him to the city. Glory to God. So God is going to give you time and space to put you ahead of your enemy to make it into the city to accomplish that which he calls you to do. Receive the word of God. I'm just telling you, we could, good, what did, um, there's a man that used to preach and he would say, give him praise and glory in the house of God. Amen. Cause where's the house of God? Wherever we are, we, he's coming back for Zion. So let's keep going. Right? So second Kings six and 13, it says, go find out where he is. So now the king is mad. Cause it's like, hold on. How's he been in my bed chamber hearing my conversations? Cause that's how the enemy is. Right. But God said, I'll give you witty strategies. I will give you gifts to help you be ahead of the enemy so that you will know where the enemy is coming from. Glory to God. Go find out where he is. The king order. So I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. I don't know why I want to cry on that part, but you're going to wake up sometimes and feel like you're surrounded by the enemy. You're going to wake up sometimes and feel like the enemy has encamped around and about you. You went to bed one way. You were happy, full of joy. You had peace and you woke up and now wait, what? You look outside, you get to work, you get to your business, you get to church, you get to where you're going. And all of a sudden, all hell has broken loose. You have enemies have surrounded you. Glory to God. Right. And so here it is. They found out that he was in Dothan. And so now in the dark of night, late in the midnight out, right? <laughs> They're in there sleeping, minding their business. And now they send horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and they surrounded the city. So on today, if you find yourself surrounded in the city by the enemy, right? If you find yourself surrounded by chariots, if you, if you find yourself surrounded by horses, and if you surround it, you find yourself surrounded by strong forces, glory to God. This is what the Lord wants you to know. When the servant of the man of God got up talking about Elisha and went out early the next morning. No, this is the servant. I'm sorry. When the servant of Elisha went out got up and went out early the next morning an army with horses and chariots has surrounded the city oh my lord what shall we do the servant asked now haven't we found ourselves there like god what am i gonna do the enemy is encamped around and about me i haven't done anything wrong fear overcomes you intimidation can grip you you know anxiety can overtake you and you're like oh my god like what what are we gonna do and so thank god for a believer Thank God for a prophet that's like, oh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I got this, right? And this is what the Lord wants you to do on the day. So if you find yourself surrounded by the enemy, if you find yourself surrounded by the chariots of darkness, if you find yourself surrounded by the devil's henchmen, glory to God, and they come in the form of friends, frenemies, people, church, employees, um, co-workers, managers, bosses, some, sometimes in the ministry, if you find yourself surrounded by these people, this is what the Lord thy God wanted me to share with you on today. Because he's already said, I'm causing you to advance against the truth. I'm causing you to advance on today. I'm causing you to scale the wall on today. I've shown you the way and I'm taking you there ahead of time in advance. Don't be afraid of what you see. Glory to God. So this is 2 Kings 6, 15. So when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots has surrounded the city. Oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. He said, don't be afraid. The prophet answered. 
Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Glory to God. And Elijah prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road and this is not the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. And so after they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? He said, do not kill them. He answered, would you kill men you have captured with your own sword above? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So God is saying, don't kill your enemy with your tongue. Don't kill your enemy with your mouth. But know that there are more with you and there are more with you and I than there are with them because we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness. Glory to God. And what the Lord shared with me on Saturday on the way home, we are encamped around angels with flaming swords as well. We have servants that are attending to our every need. The word of God said that I'm going to cause my... Um, angels to keep you lifted up that you won't even so much as stump your toe glory to god you won't even so much as stump your toe but where you are assigned you are the fiery hedge for some people you are the protection for some people do you even know who you are glory to god some things and some places and some people and some ministries and some businesses and some corporations they are held up because of your presence glory to god i mean that I'm not talking about because we're anything or anybody. I'm saying because of the power of the Holy Spirit that possess, that rest, rule, and abide in you because the kingdom is within you. So therefore, because of the kingdom that is within you, that place is able to sustain itself. That place is able to be blessed because of your presence. Glory to God. So don't be afraid. On today, as you advance against the troops, on today, as you scale the wall, on today, as you go ahead of the enemy, be encouraged. Glory to God. There are more with us than there are with them, and we will be protected. And what we need to do is feed our enemies, heap hot coals on their head, love them, show them kindness, don't kill them with our words, don't kill them with our ways, love on them and send them back to their master, and then you run on and do what thus saith the Lord. Glory to God. So I did not mean to be this long on today, and every day at lunch at Lunch and Learn would not be this long, right? So who am I? I'm Pastor Garlinda Price with Common Ground Ministry. Shout out to my honey bunny, my lamb chop. Y'all know who he is. If you don't, it's Pastor Marvin Price Jr. I love him. He is just such a hottie, right? So anyway, he's my lamb chop, and I love him. And we do Bible study every Tuesday night sometimes Wednesday night at seven. The only time we don't do it is if our children have events. Okay. So I love you. God bless you. And we'll talk to you soon.